Okay, well we are back. Not a whole lot of hours left in the day, but we're going to go ahead and see how much cutting we can get done here. I want to cut out the rest of the floor on this side. I was going to take apart the steering wheel and stuff, but I think I'm going to put that on hold. I'm not going to deal with that right away. I'm going to cut out the rest of the center console and get this out of the way. And, uh, well, I'd really like to see what's on the other side of this, um, we learned sign. The ducks are fighting. I don't know if you can hear them too well, but they're actually fighting over there. Never fails. Two of them are in the pool. Way over there. You'll be good to her. Always Boomer picking a fight. I saw him do it too. Anyways, <laughs> back on subject. As we learn, the, uh, these are actually signs face down. So what I'm going to do is pull up the other side of this, lay the two of them together, and see if we can figure out exactly what it might say. I don't know if it's anything historical, but yeah, I'm going to cut it up, same method as before. I try to grind off as many of the screw heads as possible, and then saws all the bitch right on out. So let's go for it. Well, taking a break just for a minute. This uh, <laughs> actually required a lot more effort to uh, lift than the other side did. Screws are in very haphazard places. On the other side, they had more of a pattern. Over here, they're just all over the place. I don't know if the same guy worked on this or not that uh, <laughs> replaced these. Repla well, he didn't even replace the floors. He just covered the floors. But uh, yeah, it's a sloppy mess. So um, I'm going to continue tearing it up and getting through it. But... I said I just had to take a rest. This was uh, a lot of hunching over and a lot of awkward angles because I left the steering wheel in. And I said I was going to pull that out, and I'm ashamed that I haven't yet. But, well, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> All right, let me reposition some cameras, and we're going to uh, continue at this here and see if we can get this whole thing out today.
Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with Gregory, and I've been tearing up the floors inside of him, as you probably saw. I ripped out the driver's side, and I got around those pedals, and it actually worked out pretty good. Uh, before I get into any of that, I released a Q&A video yesterday, and I'm really sorry about the audio quality on it. I had made a mistake, and I didn't know it until actually I got inside and started to edit the videos, and the audio quality was for crap. But the video was done, so I just I had to get it out and up. So I made what I did, and you know, a mistake was in it, but I'm sorry. The first five seconds of that video, I actually described what I did, and it was as simple as this. The audio was plugged into the wrong port, and that's why it's way overdriven. It was coming out of the headphone port, which it should be coming out of the line out port. And what happens is the headphone actually delivers more amplification, more power. So what happens is it way overdrives the system, and it sounds like a guitar distort distortion pedal. So um, I'm sorry for that, really I am. Within the first five seconds, I did announce what I had done and made a joke out of it, but people still ask, hey, your audio sucks, why? First five seconds, I said, why? <laughs> if you're missing the video, the first five seconds, five seconds in, I said what it was. So if you missed it, you missed it, I'm sorry. Not my fault, I did make a mistake, but now that I know what I've done, I'll be extra careful about plugging in the wrong port, and I think it's in the correct one now. Yeah, it's in the correct one. I can see the little audio scale bouncing, and it's not maxing out with every little sound that I make. Before, if I just rub my fingers together like this, it would maximize the VU meter. So <laughs> I did know something was wrong, but I didn't realize the audio quality was gonna suck. So we're back. We're gonna continue cutting up the floor. I'm gonna work on that center console. Um, some people said that when I cut out the center console, I should reinforce it. If I do remove some metal, I always try to replace it with something that's going to make the vehicle stronger. So yes, there will be some modifications made to that and I will do something to address that situation. Is it gonna be immediate? No, I still have to find a patch panel to replace that walkthrough area between the, the uh, two front seats. Uh, the panel that's in there is for shit and I have not found a proper replacement panel for it yet. So I'm probably gonna use some generic corrugated steel and cut it to size and drop it in place with some type of reinforcement on the bottom. Uh, the thing that's really silly is that the reinforcement that comes on a factory walkthrough bus is only about an inch thick and it's folded about four times and then welded over and it's about that long and that's it. There's one reinforcement. Everybody said there's all kinds of different braces and brackets and there's this frame and build a, build a tube frame underneath it and this stuff. It's not that. <laughs> it's not that complicated. It really isn't. So I'm going to bridge that gap with something really simple. I'll probably wind up making something nice out of it and I'll try to hide it as best I can so it's under the floor. So, well, we really don't have to see it. But um, yeah, we're going to continue tearing this thing up and go from there. So the center console is coming out. And uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Check out duckshit.net so that way you can find my mailing address. And <laughs> the mailing address. The one that was shown in the last Q&A video, which was way overdriven. Which everybody seems to fail to understand that that is my mailing address. I want you to have that. So if you want to track me down and go to that mailing address, I actually talked to the company, the guys who run the company over there that operate my mailbox. And I said, uh, if anybody wants to find me, I'll send them to your address. And he laughed. He says, please do send me the business. So yeah, if you want to stalk me, go ahead and go to that address and you'll find a business over there and buy yourself a mailbox. So tell them I sent you over. I don't know if they give you a discount, but yeah, tell them I sent you. <laughs> Guys, you guys, I'm going to bring this up in, in a future Q&A video, maybe even as far as tomorrow to discuss the details as to why my mailing address is not a big deal. Anyways, um, we're going to jump back into this. Let me finish cutting up that console. Uh, it's about to rain again. I'm looking. It's, it's getting pretty dark, and it's not just the sun going down, but I got more done faster than I thought I would. So let's go ahead and tear it up, and uh, hopefully we'll be done in not too long. Appreciate it. Okay, wrapping it up for the day, looking inside of here, we can see that the uh, frame here in the center where the shifter is is completely rotted. The whole top of it is just rotted to hell. The gas pedal's not really connected to too much anymore, so I'm going to have to fix that. 
Also the frame over on this side, you can see right here, a little bit of a curved spot that's uh, rusted there on the bottom, as is a spot right there. At least that's what it looks like anyway. It might just be dirt and cobwebs and stuff. There's also a little bit of a rust spot on the frame on this side. Actually, looking on the outside of it, you don't see the problem too much, but it's there. But the rust isn't too obvious on the outside, so that needs to be fixed too. All in all, uh, it's really not too bad. It, it's not structurally unsound or, or, or uh, um, dangerous. But a little bit of cutting, a little bit of patching should fix it. I should not have to cut the frame or split the frame in any way. And I really don't want to split it because if I split the frame on the front here, these doors are probably not going to close right afterwards. So you got to keep everything straight. And I think that if I cut the front end off of the frame there, it's, it's going to mess all that up. So even if I brace it, I don't think it's going to be quite perfect again. So I'm not going to cut the frame if I don't have to. I'm going to try to leave that alone. The uh, rear valence, that curved spot that runs along here on the back side actually looks pretty good. The one on the front side, however, that was that piece that fell off onto my uh, tow bar <laughs> that I showed when I was cleaning Gregory out, tearing everything up in here. Well, I, I don't think it's, um, it's going to be too hard to fix here. I'll get in here and do some small patching. It's going to need a lot of cleaning. There's going to be a lot of uh, phosphoric acid that goes on this stuff, a lot of wire brushing. I'm going to take apart all the um, the control mechanisms over there and clean them all up individually, sandblast them probably, paint them up individually once again, and bolt them all in there with either new hardware or I'll sandblast all the old hardware and paint it all up and get that resituated. I think it looks pretty good though. I mean, the good thing is, is all the metal that the new floor has to attach to is in pretty good shape except for the bottoms of the dog legs right here. Those are the only parts of the floor that look like they, they need any actual replacement other than the floor itself. Everything that goes around it looks pretty good, so I should be able to attach the new floor to all this other stuff. Well, yeah, I certainly got my work cut out for me, but, uh, you know, piecemeal, one step at a time. But this was all about getting caught up with C.T. Moog. I believe he's at a similar point right now where he's got his floor torn up, but he also has his seat pedestals out. Those should go back in pretty easy, though. He has the box all around it. So you just kind of lay it over and weld it around. So I think that uh, what we're looking at here is... Um, very doable, very doable. The uh, center walkthrough section, now that I've seen it without everything on it, it looks like it's only rusted with a strip right through here. I, I actually might be able to just take a piece of steel and fold my own corrugation into it and um, just lay it over that and weld it all back in. While I have a strip removed from it though, I can work on some type of uh, structural frame to build under there and make it a little bit stronger than it is otherwise. And I kind of have an idea in mind that I think is going to work out pretty well without getting too overly sophisticated in here, without making it too ugly, or just overdoing it. I want to maximize the amount of space in here too. And that was the other problem with that center console. It's just, it, it removed a lot of usable and kind of livable space. I mean, I do plan to camp in this thing and I'm not a small person. And I would like to take the ducks and uh, probably a, you know, a lady friend or maybe two uh, camping periodically and uh, having a good time. So we'll see what happens with that. This bus certainly needs to be accelerated just for that reason alone because I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> well, truth be told, I'm not getting any younger, but the women I'm dating sure have been. <laughs> yeah, well, that's life. That's just the way it goes. I never expected to be this way, but I'm happy. I'm happy and I'm not married. I don't have kids. I have the ducks and they're over here playing right now in the pile of rubbish that I've thrown around here when I cleaned out Gregory. I've got to throw these tarps back inside there. Right, Skeeter? You drying off? You're being a very good girl, aren't you? Yeah, your brother's not beating you up anymore. Daddy gave him a little reprimand. Yes, he did. And he's being good now. Yeah, you be good duckies. There they are. And she's squealing at her brother right now. He hasn't even done anything to her. That is just typical. It's just what she does. <laughs> All right, well, as always, you guys, please like, comment, subscribe. Please pluck that dingle belly. Don't forget to check out duckshit.net where you'll find all of my social media links. If there's something you'd like to talk to me about, even if it's personal, please hit me up on the social media links. Don't post the personal stuff in the damn comments. Some people have been doing that lately, and it's really getting annoying because I have to delete your damn comment. Sometimes it's not even personal about me. It's personal about a third party. And if you want to know something about somebody else, don't put that shit in public. Come on, guys, really. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. As always, really do appreciate you. I do appreciate your good comments, and there's a lot of them. I mean, 99.99999% of them have been really good comments lately. I've gotten very, very little hate, and the only ones that I've gotten are people saying that, hey, Duckman, you can't do that. Those parts aren't going to work. 
well, we're going to prove you wrong once again. And that's the kind of crap that I heard when I started building Eleanor, and you see what she looks like now. <laughs> By the way, I was told those hinges that I got for Eleanor aren't going to work either. But uh, we're going to try to demonstrate that in a video coming up this week. Maybe as soon as tomorrow I'll get started. Maybe, uh, maybe Monday. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Thanks.